are going to continue with module 5. The next topic is FP growth algorithm. FP means frequent pattern growth algorithm. In the case of a priori algorithm, there are two problems. One, we generate all the candidates before we decide whether the candidate is, is to be kept or to be pruned off. In this case, we do not have to generate all the candidates. Instead, we keep all the information in the database as an FP tree and then we generate the patterns from that FP tree. There is another problem in the a priori algorithm that one scan of the database is not enough to get the frequent patterns. In this case, since all the information is already present in the FP tree that we create in the first step, in the second step, everything that we require can be got from this FP tree and so we do not need to scan the database again. Now the steps are two. Aditya step will FP tree frequent pattern tree is created and this tree will have all the information in the data base. Second, from this FP tree, Adhim will conditional pattern base in a create. Now our conditional pattern base will mean frequent items and patterns in a create. And that will be our frequent item set. Now we are going to look at an example so that I can explain to you how the FP tree is created and how patterns are generated. We are going to look at the same example as we did for the a priori algorithm. We have got nine transactions. That are oro transactions and that the items are that can are not done. It table all that. This is why we have done a priori algorithm. A priori algorithm is done. That means that the item L1 is generated. The L1 is generated. This order is done. This 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 is done. Descending order will arrange. So this is where we start. I2 in a atom code will support all of the other one. I1 and I3 will support all of the other atom code. That's the end of our order. I4, I5, 2. So this is our starting point. From this starting point, we are going to create the FP tree. This is the FP tree. Now I will explain to you how the FP tree is being drawn. You can see that I have already written the items in L1 arranged in descending order of support. Now, this is the transactions that we have got. This is the transactions that we have got. The first step for creating the FP tree is draw a null node. This is the root. From this, we are going to draw all the other nodes. For this, we will look at one transaction at a time and the support will also be available in this tree itself. So, the first set is I1, I2, I1, I2, I5. So, I am going to draw I1, I2, I5 but according to this order, I1, I2, I5 will not be I1, I2, I5. I2 has got the highest frequency. So, I will be drawing it as I2, I1, I5. I2, I1, I5. So, look how the tree is going to come. Okay. From here, you will have I2 because that is where the order is. Right now, my support is 1. And then from I2, I have I1. Again, my support is 1. Then I have I5 and again right now my support is 1. So that was my first transaction and I am completed with the first transaction. Now I have got my second transaction that is I2, I4 and the order is correct over here. I2 has got the highest frequency and I4 has got next frequency. So again I have I2. So I am coming over here. I already have from the root node I have an I2. So from here I am going to draw I4 but since I2 already exists over here now my count is not 1 I am cutting it and the count is now 2. So the support is 2 and I have I4 with support 1. So my second transaction is done. Third transaction I2 I3 again my null has already got an I2 branch so I will simply draw change the count to 3 and I3 with support 1. 
So now I have got the third transaction. Next transaction is I1, I2, I4. But now the order is different. I2 will come first, then I1, then I4. So I will draw I2, I1, I4. So over here, if you see, we already have from the null, we have I2. So now my support is no longer 3, it has become 4. Here I have an I1 already connected to I2. So I'm going to change the support to 2. But to I1, I don't have a 4. So I'm creating another node for I4 with support 1. So now my fourth transaction is done. Fifth transaction is I1, I3. And the order is fine. I1 is 6 and I3 is 6. So the order is fine. I have I1, I3. Now my problem is that to the null node, I have only I2 connected. I don't have an I1 connected directly to the null node. So I have a second branch from the root. And this is now I1 with support 1 and over here I have I3 with support 1. So I have the fifth transaction is done. Now in the sixth transaction I2, I5. Now uh, sorry I2, I3. So I already have a node over here. I simply increase the support and then I have a connection to I3 too. So I again increase the support to I have completed the sixth transaction. Now the seventh transaction, I1, I3. I already have an I1, I3 over here. So all I need to do is increment the support for I1, I3. Then 8, I have got I1, I2, I3, I5. So now I have to change the order. It will become I2, I1, I3, I5. So let's look at it. From the null node, I have I2. So I simply make this 6, I2, I1, I have an I1, so I increase the support, I have an I3, sorry this is, this is I4, we do not have an I3, so I2, I1, I3, I3 I am going to draw a node over here, sorry, here, with I3 and a support 1 and from I3 I have I5 with a support of 1. I already had I2 and I1. To I1 I didn't have an I3 so I built another node I3 and I built a node I5 and it has got support 1. That is my 8th transaction. My ninth transaction is I1, I2, I3 which will become I2, I1, I3. Let's see. We have I2, we have I1 and we have I3. So now the support only needs to be changed. I2 becomes 7, I1 becomes 4 and this I3 becomes 2. So now you will see that you have got the, the FP tree. This is our FP tree. Now the next step that we need to do is you have got a node link over here. We are going to link all of these leaf nodes which has got ended with I2 or the path of I2. We are going to transfer to this. Now if you see over here, this has got the total count is 7. And this link is going, there is only one I2 node. So that has been connected to the I2 node. All seven are accounted for in this support count. So there is no more I2. That's it. Now I1 has got six. So where does I1 go? Let's connect. This is one I1. So first one we will connect over here. But you can see that here the support is only four. And actually the total support is six. So two is somewhere else which we need to connect it from this node. So from here I am connecting it to here. Now I have got 4 plus 2 which is equal to 6. Continue to do this. Connect all of the nodes with its corresponding positions and then you will get the FP tree that you see in your presentation. Now if you see over here all the nodes have been connected accordingly. This is our FP tree. Now from this FP tree we are going to create the conditional base. Now, when we create the conditional database, we create it in the opposite direction. We were always working with higher to lower. But when we create the um, 
when we mine the frequent patterns, we are going to start with patterns with I5 and then we will move to patterns with I4, then we will move to patterns with I3 and I1 and so on and I will show you how that is being done. This is how, this is what we have got. We have got the FP tree. And you know that this is how the ascending, sorry, descending order is. So here you can see that it starts at I5, then goes to I4, then goes to I3, and then goes to I1. And we do not need to do I2 because I2 is a part of all of these. So there are two items or three items or four items, whichever they are, it is part of these. So we do not have to do I2. It will be, see, this is not a leaf node. Since it's not a leaf node, it will be contained in the other four. Now let's look at what's happening over here. Let's look at I5. The first is the item set. From that, we are creating the pattern base. Okay, conditional pattern base. It's very simple. I5. I5 ends over here. So one of the patterns that we have got is I2, I1, I3. And that is what is being shown over here. I2, I1, I3. And its support is 1 because the last support is 1. So through this pattern we can reach to I5 and the support is 1. The next I5 we can see over here. This is the next I5. So that we have got I2, I1, I5. Here also the support is 1. So we have got I2, I1, 1 and I2, I1, I3 both with support 1. This is our conditional pattern base. From this, we are generating the condition FP tree. So remember that our minimum support is 2. Since our minimum support, support is 2, if you look over here, we have I2 over here which has got support 1 and I2 over here which has got support 1. So I2, we have got support 2. I1 we have got over here and we have got over here. So that also we have got support 2. But if you look at I3, we have only got support 1. So we have got the path I2, I1. This is a FP tree which has got the minimum support 2. But the path through I3, it does not give me the minimum support of 2. So my conditional FP tree will not have I3. It will only have I1 and I2 with the support Two. Okay. Now from this we generate the frequent patterns. Now frequent patterns is very simple. You simply add the I5 to each of these elements and all the subsets that you can create from supersets that you can create from this particular set and I5 you will create over here and give the support. So first thing I am simply adding I2 I5 with support 2. That is over here. I1, I5 with support 2. That's over here. And then we have I2, I1, I5 with support 2. And that is our frequent pattern that has been generated. Similarly, we can do for I4. In the case of I4, we have got one I4 over here. And we have got one I4 over here. So we will have I2, I1 with support 1. And I2 with support 1. So we have I2, I1 with support 1. I2 with support 1. From this we can see that I2 has got support 2 but I1 does not have support 2. So here we have only I2. And from this only one superset can be generated. I2, I4. So it is I2, I4, 2. This is how the frequent patterns are generated in FP. You can continue and do for I3 and I1. You will see that these are the frequent patterns that are generated and if this is drawn as a, a tree as an fp tree that is what you will get the conditional fp tree this is not the conditional fp tree this is step one fp tree from this you generate the frequent patterns once the frequent patterns have been generated you already know i have told you earlier how to create the association rules if we have the association rule i1 i2 i5 generate all of its subsets calculate the confidence fix the in this particular case, the confidence is fixed as 70. So only these three rules will support that particular confidence. So only these three rules will be generated from this frequent set. That's the end of today's class. Thank you very much.